Hi, I'm Jack Coxwell, and I'm here today with JT from the ABCs of Attraction. Hey. Nice to meet you, man. How's it going? Thanks for having Good. me on the show. Um, so tell me, how did you get involved in this community uh, in the first place? Um, I started back in January of 2004, so I've been in this for a while. And obviously, like most men, I discovered uh, that I sucked with women. So I had to like, obviously find a solution, and, and I basically you know, went with a mystery method you know, way back then during the Project Hollywood days and started to experiment and moved on from there. So you weren't in the Project Hollywood? I partied there. I was, you know, I, I so had some friends, friends that, who lived there? Yeah. Oh, and nice. so I knew like Katia and like Eric and, and Matador and those guys. So. so you knew them before they got really good? Pretty much. I used to be like, me and Matador used to wing um, down in Orange County all the time. Oh, wow. Yeah. So before he turned into like a Hulk, he looks like he can walk <laughs> yes, through walls exactly. now. Yeah, exactly. So I'm like one of those old war veterans. I've been around for a while. I see, I see. So how has learning to become uh, good with women changed your life? By learning the, the skill set as well as the confidence to be good with women, it's you know made me obviously more outgoing. Um, it's made me take more risk, more be willing to take more risk in, in life and in general because I don't know if you know this, but I used to be an aerospace engineer. I used to be like uh, literally a rocket scientist. Wow. I'm not kidding you. And... You know, just just kind of having that um, the wherewithal to not only be kind of making practical decisions mm -hmm. and calculated risks, but to actually go out and do it. Because I went, I've gone through like most of the world, uh, Europe, uh, Australia, South America. So just doing this, it's taking you all over the place. Yeah, yeah, and it's also it's nice to have, I guess you would say, a legacy to give back to the to the world, as opposed to just being some sort of like cubicle drone or. Or you know, kind of salary man. I'm actually doing something I believe that is worthwhile. Yes. Uh, so could you just break down what the ABCs of attraction are a little bit for me? Well, the ABCs of attraction, like I said before, is a pretty simple model that goes from A to F. It's an acronym essentially: A B C D E F. And it also incorporates what we call the holistic uh, plug-and-play model which means that there are three major components to your game at each phase, at each letter. There's your inner game, there's your outer game, and then there's your verbal game. So, you know, I'm not gonna go too much in detail, but uh, to break it down really quickly, like A is about attitude. Like I was talking about, like how to just give value, to, to be that interesting guy, that, you know, that charming guy. Give that, value, don't take it. Exactly, right? Um, there's, there's attitude, attract. You know, you're a tr attraction happens before you even talk to the girl, all right? And that's your body language. And then there's the actual approach, what you say to the girl. Um, like I was saying, uh, our, mo our motto is uh, beginners think what, the average think how, the experts think where. So then we get into, uh, we talked about some openers, the direct openers mm -hmm. and some, the kickstart opener. Then we get into B, which is be in the moment, okay? Uh, banter and buying temperature, where buying temperature is actually a sales terminology, which uh, means inducing an emotional state. So here's like a fun thing. One of the, the ideas of be in the moment is like if I am doing something fun that amuses me and makes me laugh, it's gonna it's gonna increase her buying temperature state. She's gonna be in the moment. She's gonna laugh. And this is why we don't have to do false time constraints. You know, FCC. It's like oh, you know, I only have five minutes, but I blah blah blah. Or yeah. I need a female opinion. The idea is to disarm their skepticism. They're like, why is he coming up? Or like, or to make them feel comfortable that you're not going to linger. Exactly. But the thing is, if, and B, if I can make her laugh almost instantly, mm -hmm. or like very initial in the initial phase, she does not. She's not going to care. She's going to enjoy your presence. She's that that logical question in her mind yeah. goes away. Well, my problem with the time constraint mm -hmm. is, say, uh, a really hot chick is talking to you. You're not thinking when's she going to leave. No. You're thinking a lot of other things. Right. So you want to see yourself with the same value. Right. So you want to make her laugh, like near the beginning, you know, you know, and you want to make yourself, put yourself in state if you're not already. Mm -hmm. So a couple of things I'll do is if she's a white girl and she's like dancing or whatever, I'll simply say, oh, I am so glad you do not have CRD. CRD? Caucasian Rhythm Disorder. I like that always gets a laugh from from the girls, um, but also I like to throw in physical things, which will which will um, make her laugh, make me laugh because there's a touching keynote component. So I'll be talking to the girl and it's like, oh, do, do you work out? Yeah, do you work out? 
No. No. Oh, here, flex for me anyway. Yeah, let me see. Flex. All right, flex. 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 Why? Come on, flex. Okay. Flex. <laughs> yeah, flex. Yeah, I kid, I kid. See, it's a little fun thing, you know. It's an opportunity to tease her. It's an opportunity to kino. She's feeling you touch her. You would ask a girl if she works out. Yeah, or just to flex for me. <laughs> you know, it's it's pretty normal. I so, see. Um, uh, there's like high five. There's silly high fives. You know, like if you notice when you high five someone, you put yourself in a good state. You know, he's like high five, boom, right? Good state. But let's say you do something a little bit sillier. Mm. Um, you're like high five. Give me some paper. Give me paper. Paper. Hi, right, high five. Give me paper. Yeah. All right, give me the rock. And right, give me scissors. Oh, I see. Oh, you naughty girl. Oh, I so see. It's, it's silly, but at the same time, it throws in that physical component that makes you feel good. You're touching her, she's touching you, you're reciprocating. So that's B. And then. Yeah, those are really easy to even just remember to do. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. Um, then there's C, D, E, F, where like C is like compliance, comfort, connect. D is dominance, direct, disqualify. E is evaluate, extract, escalate, and. You know, we all know what F is. Um, other, but actually, other than that, it's about your future. Are you a fun or a fake guy? Because that is one thing I run into the community a lot are guys that get good at pickup, but the life still sucks. <laughs> it's like. You mean financially and health wise? Sucks. Financially and health wise, the actual social circle, they, they're only good at picking up women, but they're not, not, not good at anything else in life. Hmm. You've mentioned before that you think your students are among the most difficult to teach. What makes you say that? I wouldn't say they're the most difficult to teach. I would say more that they're, compared to a lot of the mainstream guys, uh, not as socially experienced. What's a mainstream guy? Like Caucasian. Okay. <laughs> you. Me? <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm not mainstream. <laughs> um, but when you're, you know, when you're born in a different country and you're moving over here or you don't speak the language, um, there's a lot more things that have to go, we have to go over because sometimes the humor doesn't translate because you're, you're trying to think in a, a different language to translate to English and so on and so forth. Um, there's also cult differences in, in cultural uh, influences of like making eye contact, things of that nature. And this is how I came up with like the holistic, if you will, methodology where every phase of like the A, B, C, D, E, F there are three main components, like thoughts, words, and actions, or as we call it, like inner game, outer game, and verbal game. So we try to cover all the bases and make sure everyone has a firm foundation, because that's where you're, you're gonna springboard to success, is if you have a firm foundation that's properly, you know, properly placed. Right. I suppose some guys who are always just, they're learning technique after technique, but maybe it, their body language is off, and they're not projecting the kind of physical confidence, and, you could have the best pickup line in the book, but if you can't deploy it properly, then it doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. It's like uh, we have a saying at the ABCs. Um, beginners think what to say to the girl. The average think how to say it to the girl. But it's the experts think where to fuck her. <laughs> so do you think pickup is different for men of different races? Uh, yes, on a couple different levels. One is mentally we do it to ourselves because... A lot of times, a lot of my Asian students would say, oh, you know what, American girls don't like Asian guys, right? The small penis thing. Yeah, I mean, there's like the, the very stereotypes. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's things that we do to ourselves. But also, yes, there, there are very real cultural factors that play a part. Mm -hmm. um, in my experience, like 90% of all the white girls and non-Asian girls I've dated, 90% of them have never dated an Asian guy, but they're not against it either. It's just like, in their experience, no Asian guy has ever talked to them, hit on them. Right. Or even if he did, it was just not very good, right? I see. Um, just like half the other people, they weren't very good either. Right. But the thing is, like, women tend to form blueprints of, based off of the guys that she's attracted to, the guy that she fell in love with, the guy that, you know, she had sex with, she lost yeah. her virginity You must to. hear a lot that you're not her usual type when you're... Oh, hell yeah. Them. Like I said, it's... it's I am the most interesting Asian man in the universe. It's, I am by far, they, they will never meet someone like me again. Um, and so that's, that's one thing is that Asian guys, they, they disqualify themselves mentally because they say, oh, this black girl's not gonna like Asian guys. Oh, this white girl's not gonna like Asian guys. If you don't try, you're never going to know. What is the most common uh, mistake you see guys making? The most common mistake, there are, there are quite a few. It's hard to pinpoint just one mistake. Uh, 
But I think one of the ones I, I see uh, in a lot of guys is there's this kind of fear of rejection. Obviously, we, we all get it. Yeah. But part of it is coming from the idea that they want something from the girl. They That's want, where like, the rejection comes from. Yeah, because when they don't get her number or she won't reciprocate or she won't like talk to him, or she won't smile at him. He's like, oh, you know, his heart little breaks. And <laughs> that, that's understandable. You you know, you want people to like you, but I think we want to progress beyond that. Instead of trying to get her to like you, just presenting that value, as they say, giving value. Um, you ever see the, the commercial, uh, the Dos Equis commercials? Love those commercials. Yeah, it's like the most interesting man in the world. And... One night, I remember one girl telling me, "Is like JT, you are like the most interesting Asian man I've <laughs> ever met," and that, that to me is like what I try to strive for. Is she can die happy having known me. There will, <laughs> there will not be a more interesting like Asian man or man in her life than me, and so she'll she can die happy. And what I want to stress to the guys is, don't try to get something from her. What she want to be able to go out and just just project this kind of value. You know, if, if you're the sun that's crossing across uh, the landscape, uh, you know, the sky, you've got like a sunflower. And as the sun progresses, the sunflower always, you know, follows the sun. That's what you want to be. You're the one that's giving off these light giving ray, rays of life and, and warmth. All right? You want to be that person that people just gravitate towards. I don't know, it's, it's, it's conceptually, if you're in like the very newbie phase, conceptually, mm -hmm. it's like, how do you get there? But yeah, it's the like transition. You, yeah, that's that's tough. But I think if you can just get over the mentality of, oh, you know, I'm going to be rejected because she's not going to give me her number or she's not going to like me. Yeah. Don't care if she likes you or not. Just be as interesting and as charming as you can so be. So the next thing someone's going to ask is, well, how do I be interesting if, uh, you know, I sit at home and... I'm a computer programmer. There's nothing <laughs> you play interesting Starcraft. about that. Well, first of all, stop playing Starcraft. World of Warcraft. <laughs> yeah, That's World of Warcraft. these days. No, when Starcraft 2 comes oh, up. No. Oh, oh, no. That will wipe out like entire generations of nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but it's like, I call it like uh, Star Starcopolips. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Um, and just getting out there and living in life because that's what a lot of guys don't do is they don't expose themselves these elements to these adventures. Uh, so what are some techniques for how to read a girl's body language to know when she's interested in you? Let's talk even before approaching her. If you see like two girls and they're barely even talking to each other mm -hmm. or they're doing like kind of like polite chit chat, they're out there, they're not necessarily looking to get laid, but they are kind of boy watching. They are being receptive. I remember one of my students, um, and I said, okay, two step right over there. They're at the bar, totally easy. They want, they want to go home with someone, okay? And it's like, how can you tell? It's because they're, they're at a bar. Most people that are at a bar, they're sitting like facing the bar, and yeah. they're kind of like this, and they're talking to each other. They were sitting at the bar? The yeah, stools? two stools. Okay. okay. That's how most people sit, right? At, they're facing the bar, kind of angled towards each other, and talking. Especially right. girls. So they're, like so, yeah, they're, like, they're talking and talking. Mm -hmm. But this is what they're doing. Not only were they not facing the bar, they were first out this way and just kind of like, like this. You know, I, I hate were talking like yeah, to each like, other kind sideways. of like glancing over. But I hate to say it, this is one mistake I see a lot of community guys do is you go out together, you, you know, you're, you're bro, you're wingman. But what you'll see is like a bunch of community guys that don't talk to each other and don't look at each other. They're just kind of like scoping out the No, the, the whole time everyone's head is in a different direction, exactly. right? Exactly. They're always like this and... Exactly. They don't look like they're having fun. Yeah, and so these girls, they'll do something as similar, but not as not as obvious, but they'll, they'll look. So in those cases, it, that means that they're looking to engage someone, all right? Right. Um, other ways, like, let's say you're in sets, what I like to do, or... Um, what about this? The hair touching. Is that, is that actually it is. valid? It's so subtle. I mean, like... Some yeah. chicks just like to touch their hair. It is. They have very luxurious mane. Yeah, if mine um, was soft, I'd probably be right now yeah. touching it. Um, I would not consider that to be like a significant IOI. What I like to do is like compliance testing and sexual compliance testing. And the more she invests into you, the more you know, basically she'll pass the compliance test. Um, one thing I've learned early on, basically, is is women don't find me physically attractive. I hate to say this, but <laughs> they don't. I, I, That's I, hard to say. No, I was. I was at the age of 24, I believe, when the first time a girl ever called me hot. 
that you know, living like a quarter of a century without anyone saying that you're physically attractive, that's you know, whatever. And I've had students that are like, oh my god, JT, I'm so glad you're not good looking. I'm like, <laughs> really? Okay. Oh god. Um, but that's because if I can do it, like everyone must be able to do it. Um, well, you're a good example then. Yeah, and so basically with these, you know, these girls, I, I just say don't pay attention to IOIs because unless you're good looking, you know, you're not going to get it. You just have to be able to be, you know, I, I, I would love to be tall, dark, and handsome, so but I can settle for short, stunning, and smooth. Well, that was good. Yes. I like that. I'm short too. Um, so you don't get the IOIs if you're not good looking, you're saying. Only good looking guys get them. Um, everybody can get them, but whether or not you want to trust them. Yeah. You know, it's, I wouldn't trust them simply because, you know, IOIs are not the most dependable way. I say just do compliance testing and make her invest. So investing is the way to know yeah. if she's attracted. Yeah. Because if she doesn't invest, then I guess. Yeah. I mean, if she's not going to walk uh, from the bar to like a table with you, you're not going to take her home if you can't even walk her 20 feet. So right? that's an example of investing. Yeah. That's a more like, severe example. Um... Let's see, whether like she, she buys you a drink, uh, she moves around physically with you, uh, you know, sitting in your lap. We have like these different kind of like uh, physical tactics that will display whether or not she's... Right, and this is all for bars and clubs. Yeah, I mean, it'll work during the day, but um, I have like day game coaches, but I specifically am a night game specialist. I'm pretty rocking at it. Um, if anybody's been on my Facebook, <laughs> I'm, I'm always going out there having fun. And there's always like girls. Do you think that's the key to your success? You're always having a good time. It, it helps a lot. Bring your energy down no matter what. Yeah, I mean, it helps a lot if you enjoy that your company, you enjoy what you do, and you just enjoy like this beautiful, like you know, effervescent child in front of you. <laughs> um, so what if you're out by yourself? Then you just have yourself to enjoy. Right, solo surging is pretty difficult. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I do it, but it's not for the newbie unless. You have like a bunch of wingmen that just suck. In that case, it's just probably better to charge on your own. What I recommend, this is what I did in, in Dallas when I was living there. Yeah. I moved to Dallas for a while and I started a social circle from scratch. Okay. The way I did it was I befriended every single promoter, every single bouncer, every single waitress, every single bartender at all my favorite clubs. And... Um, so that way, the next time I came to that place, mm -hmm. like the bouncer would be like, oh, JT, come on in. You know, I would like skip the line. And, you know, the waitress would go, like, hey, JT. You know, they come up and hug me and talk to the promoter, talk to the manager. Um, and so, in a way, you're instantly social proof. So people are wondering, like, who is this guy? Yeah. I mean, it is, if you're not that great at maintaining your own, you know, emotional state, if yeah. you will, it would be very difficult. But you got to start somewhere. No. Um, so what would you say is better? Like when you go out with a wingman or say you're out with a bunch of friends, should you approach together or by yourself? Basically the way I do and the way I teach my guys uh, is with ABCs, we have like advanced body language sizes, which we call BLP, body language positioning, which is very advanced. And we can do sets on our own. I mean, I'll go off my buddies, but we'll almost always do sets on our own. And only if we need them, if we, only if we need like the additional help of like, hey, you know, have you met my friend Jason? Uh, kind of deal. Right. Uh, if you're out with your friends, I mean, by all means, I say go out and enjoy it and then casually like talk to girls. But if you're out there winging each other. Um, I found it awkward like if I'm with a friend and I'll go up and I'll do the talking, you know, they're just kind of like standing there like looking around. Sometimes they don't know what to say. No. Um, again, it's, it's a matter of like, what are you trying to accomplish that night? If you're, Having you just out there to have fun, mm -hmm. you know, talk to some girls. You know, uh, I find that if if you're just with friends and you're in search mode, it weirds people out. Yeah, right. Just kind of being like social and talking to people, and that's normally how you are. I think if your friends are feeling that way a little bit weird, it's probably because you're you're switching, you're switching personalities, if you will. I see. Yeah, I find a lot of people have a hard time. Um, when they go to bars, like they feel uncomfortable because they know that they have to, you know, display their game that night. They know they have to do something. It right. can make you very on edge. How would you say some keys are to getting around those uh, initial anxiety feelings when you get there? Um, there's something we call a kickstart. It's been very successful with the majority of our students. And it's, it's a low investment type of opener where you're not trying to get anything. And it's also it's going to give you a little bit of social proof. 
and it's going to train you to not try to basically uh, take from the girl. You're going in and you're leaving. If she chooses to stay and engage you, great. Mm -hmm. If she doesn't, doesn't matter. You're not intending to stay. I see. And, and it's basically, um, one of the ideas is the idea of social obligation. If I go like, hi, my name's JT, you take my hand, right? right? Everybody in every culture, whether you're Western or Eastern, everybody knows this gesture, you just take my hand. Mm -hmm. Now, in a club setting or a bar setting, there is also another gesture um, you are socially obligated to reciprocate. And it's like, cheers. You're like, cheers. Right. If you have a beer, everybody cheers you back. And even if the girl doesn't have a beer, just go like, cheers. You know, and just pantomime. You're like, okay. Whatever. And you just say, you know, cheers. Hi, my, mm -hmm. my name's JT. You guys seem really friendly. We're celebrating XYZ. Don't be a stranger. Come by and say hi. And you can do like 10 kickstarts, engage 10 women. And the nice thing is like woman number one, she sees you with woman number seven and you're just being social. So you'll get like additional social. Right, group. They can't hear what you're saying. Exactly. And you're just being friendly. Um, and uh, like I said, it trains you to not care what the outcome is. You're just doing it because you're, you're out there to be engaging and friendly and to give value. Personally, through just doing the low investment openers, have you yourself found it easy to escalate and take things further from there? Yeah, basically what I, I try to teach my guys and what I'll do is the low investment openers to get warmed up, to be engaging, and then I'll go like very direct, call it my little kamikaze direct opener. Kamikaze. I just yeah. think of those crazy Japanese guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit of crash burn uh, element, but it's very fun, especially when you do it successfully. Like My classic is, you are fucking adorable. Um, other fun, you know, other fun ones is you go up to go. I'm like, has anyone ever told you how beautiful my eyes are? <laughs> All right, it's a little. That's it's cute. Rag, it's fun, you know. It's playful because obviously, you know, she, she thinks you're talking about her, but then you turn the tables. Right. Um, I know. I think I recommend everybody learns indirect, but also progress to direct, especially Asian guys. Like every single Asian guy, if you're still running indirect game after six months, you're doing yourself a great disservice. You you will I've never met a single Asian guy. I've you know, just making a blanket blanket statement here. I've never met a single good Asian like Peeway who still depend upon indirect game. Any. If you think you're good, sorry, you're not. So <laughs> So that'll be your first statement is a line like that. That's the first thing you say. To well, I'll, I'll walk around and I'll simply say, hello, you know, like, I love your creative ensemble. Yeah. And there's no such thing as a dead set. You should always be able to re-engage a set. Even if it kind of staled out, you should be able mm -hmm. to, like, hey, be able to re-engage. Like, there's something I call the boomerang, okay? The boomerang is a very cool way to reopen uh, a girl that you've already, you know, made a first impression on. So the idea is to make a good second impression, Okay. And what I'll do is, yeah, I'll see her again. I'm like, I'll be like, I almost made a huge mistake. I was talking to a beautiful girl, and I didn't even introduce myself. Hi, my name's JT. And I'll be like, oh, you know, maybe your first impression was weak, maybe it was strong, but why not make us another strong second impression? What about being genuine? Well, yes, yeah, I, I only tell it to beautiful girl. No, no like, <laughs> a lot of guys I find have trouble being genuine. Like, they feel like they're reciting lines. Like, say you told them to say that, they'd have a lot of trouble saying something that didn't come from, you know, the heart. Well, again, I'm not going to point them out to, like, a less attractive girl. Like, just say it onto the more attractive girls. Because one thing I've, I've found is as you get better, uh, talking to beautiful girls becomes easier while talking to less attractive girls becomes even more difficult because they're skeptical. <laughs> they become skeptical. Right. They think you're trying to trick them or something. Exactly. I mean, the first time that happened, I was like, wait a minute. I was like, why is this ugly girl giving me a hard time? <laughs> like, really, look, look at you and look at me. I mean, look at you and look at me. Um, so I don't think it's inauthentic to go up to a beautiful girl and tell her that she's beautiful mm -hmm. or that you like her. It's, that's probably the most genuine thing you can I do. I think what I'm saying is that it sounds like they're reciting a line. Um, the key to that is your subcommunication, your, your facial expressions, your tonality. Like one psychological fact is if you have different facial expressions while you talk to someone, they're more likely to trust you as opposed to if you're like talking to a person, you're like, yeah, this is big, you know, plastered a big shit eating grin on your face. Yeah. You're talking like after a while, people are going to get weirded out. 
pretty quickly they'll get weirded out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's also your ability to do, I guess, say the line, right? right. But I, it's I like direct because it's short, it's quick, it goes straight to the point, and doesn't beat. Is there a the big board. learning curve to getting to going from say level one to getting good at this? Yes. Um, depending on obviously what you bring to the table is what I call beginner's hell. Beginner's hell is actually a term that comes from dancing. I don't know if you've ever taken no, like not salsa. personally. But basically, it's if you imagine there's this linear curve like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is women. This is what, and it kind of plateaus right here. And it's easier for them to learn how to dance because it's socially acceptable, and they can shake their booty, and people encourage them. Uh, the media wants to see like attractive girls dancing, right? So everything is in their favor to learn how to yeah. dance. A guy goes like this: it's flat, it's flat, it's flat. And then after like a long period of time, it actually basically just rockets. And then it actually meets where it plateaus and a guy can become better at dancing than a girl. And I believe the same thing exists when it comes to pickup. Like a woman, what does a woman need to be like in the game and good at the game? Okay, she needs to just look hot. Yeah, she needs breasts. You know? well, she doesn't even have to look hot for some of these guys. Yeah, you can like put on some makeup and you know, you, I think we've all seen the girls that they're hot with makeup and they're not so attractive in the morning. Yeah. Um, and then there are the girls that all they do is develop their outside and their personality is just like, uh, um, and so that's all they need to do. And then they just plateau and they don't ever try to improve themselves. They don't have a reason to. You yeah. only want to improve if you feel discomfort. Yes. The girl's always getting approached. There's nothing discomfort. Yeah, she can get laid anytime she wants. Yeah. A guy, you are going to go through a long term of what we, call, what we call beginner's hell. And this can go anywhere between six months to two years. It just, it's just a massive amount of suckage. <laughs> and then you start to like really rock it up your game and you become at a certain point better, you know, than a girl when it comes to like the, the art of seduction. I see. Can you give us one kiss close tactic? Call it my ABC kiss. And this is a uh, sexual escalation ladder. And basically I go to a girl like, you know, kiss me here, kiss me here, kiss me here. So basically A, B, C, D comes later. Um, there's another one where I call it the blazer kiss. All right, I typically wear like blazers or if it's you know cold like a jacket. Mm -hmm. And the idea is, you know, you don't want to kiss in front of her friends. You don't. Right. Um, you want to be kind of private or seemingly private. That's the key. Okay. And what I do is I like take off my jacket mm -hmm. and I just kind of put it over us like this. It's like come here. I've got to tell you a secret. Just come over like that, and it's like this, this secret like conspiracy, and then you kiss her under the jacket, you know? And it just it just looks good, and she feels like, you know, it's kind of a silly thing to do, but right. it, it, it's very, you know, draws that man. Girls because, like silly. Yeah, and when you're talking and you lower your voice, um, and you're under the jacket, it changes the tenor. What is the walk of con? The walk of con is how, how to swagger if you will. Swagger? The actual, swagger. Actually, the, the, the actual walk I got to get the vision of 50 cent in my mind when you yeah, say that. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of like that. But in this case, it's, you know, the greatest, greatest, like, you know, warrior general, like Genghis Khan. I mean, if you've ever seen, like, Conan the Barbarian, right? Mm -hmm. He goes, the, his father goes, like, you know, what is good in life? And he says, to crush my enemies. You see them driven before me and hear the lamentations of their women. And because we're pickup artists, do you hear the lamentations of their women in my bed? Um, so basically, you know, I have these guys. It's, it's a fun little thing. It's silly, yes, but it, you know, you enjoy the process. You see it gets you in the right mentality. And then we have this process, okay, this is what you kind of physically um, do in order to swagger right. uh, the different aspects. Because we try to, we don't do the, like the indirect way of approaching the her. opinions. Yeah, not you don't really. do opinions. I mean, as training wheels, but not as her bread and butter. Uh, we tend to go in like a very more dominant manner. And like I was saying, Asian guys. I mean, I think all guys should do it, but especially for Asian guys, is to just be more dominant, more masculine, more confident, more sexual. Do you and you're just not projecting down? that out with comp with opinion over us. Yes. Yeah. Do you think they have that deep down? You just need to release it. The dominance. Yeah, it's there. It's it's you know it's everybody has it. The way I know it is if you get like at least one testicle, you can do it. <laughs> um, so how would you teach differently depending on your client's race? When it comes to race, when I when I have like Asian students, 
what they find rewarding is seeing me in action because there aren't a lot of, I guess, masculine Asian role models. Yeah, and so a lot of our, our students, is seeing is believing. They can hear all this theory and they can read all these eBooks and mm -hmm. watch all these YouTube videos, but it's when they see it and they, they see me do it without like fear and talking to like beautiful girls regardless of race, whether they're black or they're white, or they're tall or they're short, I'm doing it and I am not scared or when a big guy comes into AMOG, whatever. It's just, I am, I'm here, I'm, I'm doing this. And it's just presenting the, the idea that if I can do this, you can do this, all right? The actual instructions is not different. It's about just do what I do, because I am just like you, all right? So do you teach differently depending on, uh, say, the race of the girl? Are there different techniques for that? A lot of guys, they do want Asian girls. Um, and if they're coming from a different background, let's say he's black or he's white, the, one of the common things I'll hear is like, um, she's not giving out a lot of IOIs or she seems closed off or clannish or cliquish, which is absolutely true. Um, with Asian girls, it's a little bit more, I would say, indirect game in the fact that you want to befriend her friends, like especially the guy first, because Asian guys can be very territorial. So you don't want to tell her she's gorgeous in front of the guys. Right, right, because that's going to set off like these alarms from like the territorial guys. Um, and so then you befriend the guy or the befriend the girl and then get introduced to her. So that, you know, trying to get through the clicks. Another thing is like IOIs, uh, because just like Asia guys, we're not necessarily taught to be very, um, display a lot of emotion. Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is just simply don't care if you get IOIs, just go, just keep on going. <laughs> I mean, there'll Even be times. It looks like she's not interested. Just keep talking. You know, that is that is like kind of the default expression. Like literally, <laughs> the default is I don't <laughs> care about you. No, that's just what it appears. Right. That's only what it appears. But you could like. be thinking differently. Yeah, I mean, have you ever been with like a shy girl, and you keep on going, and you know she's there, she's responding, but she doesn't seem into you. But then all of a sudden, you'll do like one maneuver, like you'll kiss her, and all of a sudden, she's throwing herself on you. <laughs> You're like, what, the, what, what, what do you what mean? Happened? Like, it's like, how do you go from like zero to like a hundred? But internally, she was attracted to you, but she wasn't, you know, confident enough to display it or she, she didn't want to appear like slutty or whatever I various see. reasons. But that's basically like Asian girls are like very like just shy girls. The exception are what I find Asian girls that hang out with like white girls, you pretty much treat them like white girls. So tell me, what was your biggest sticking point when you were first... Uh getting into this and how'd you overcome it? I got like racist a mug like twice and one even one by an Asian girl who had blonde hair. Oh no. <laughs> uh, she was like, I'm going to talk to Asian guys. Get away. It was that hard. Uh, she looked like Tila, Tila Tequila. Tila Tequila. Um, and then I, I went there uh, with a bunch of friends, a bunch of social circle friends. And there was this guy who was friends with like my neighbor. And I didn't really know him. We had talked and all that kind of stuff. But I brought, later on, I, I, I shake it off, right? I shake off the blonde Asian girl, okay? Right. Got him there, I'm going to be social. I bring over this attractive Latina to introduce to my friends and things are going good. And he does this this totally, he's like joking around, but he's like aiming at me. I don't know why. He thought it'd be funny, whatever. Was but he he's, white, your friend? Yeah. No, he wasn't like my friend. He was like a friend of my neighbor. Oh, I see. And he always is like, he's like, oh, you know, why are you talking to this? Why are you talking to this guy? You know, you know, Asians have like the smallest penis, oh, right? No. And he's like trying, trying to be like the big man on campus. And you know what? I That was very hurtful. That was so like a big tough, putting people down. Wow. Yeah. So that a lot was, of security there. Yeah. Uh, that was a tough, tough evening on me. And I went over to like the forums and I wrote. And like at the time, and still to this day, there's, n there's nothing that really addresses the issue of dealing with race. Again, that, that's one of the unique hallmarks, I guess, of the Asian Playboy brand is dealing with race because everybody's like oh you know if you have confidence it won't matter if you have game it won't matter i'm i'm sorry but you can go to a ku klux Klan rally and, <laughs> and it, it doesn't matter how much game you have it, you're just not going to get the girl in that circumstance so the ability just to, to brush it off and keep on going like i was talking about it's okay to fail you know the, you are at your most magnificent i believe when you dust yourself off and you stand up after you fall down I agree with you. It shouldn't be called failure. You should just rename that lesson. Yeah. Every failure is just a lesson to learn. Yeah, it's, it's a challenge overcome. Yeah.
You find, I find if you don't actually listen to the challenges or the lessons, they just keep repeating themselves until you do listen. Yeah, it's that saying. Um, it's, it's not experience that's important. It's evaluated experience. Oh, to, I've never heard that Yeah, to, to look back and to say, okay, this is what I did right. This is what I did wrong. This is what I can improve upon, what I enjoyed. All right. I think with a lot of guys, if you're not writing field reports, guys, you have to. I mean, if you look back, I mean, I was writing field reports back in 2004. This was like the golden age of Project Hollywood. And, you know, Mystery's writing, and Neil's writing, and Tyler Dern's writing. You know, all the great minds of the seduction community are writing. And there I am, right, 2004, writing my dinky little field reports <laughs> under JT47319. You can, like, look it up. It was just, like, ridiculous. And they're, like, nothing field reports, right? But I wrote one every single weekend, at least once. And that was how I was able to tell after like 52 field reports, like where I was sucking and what I needed to do to take care of my game and to improve myself. Right. Um, that's when I learned how to transition from indirect game to direct game. So that's what I started doing. I incorporated right. more body language, incorporated more sexuality, more dominance, more sexual playfulness, more caveman, and that really was able to supercharge me to you know break through that plateau and get to the next. So you basically level. learned to do what the naturals did all along. Yeah, it, it is natural, but you know what? I'm I'm not a natural. I've never been a natural. I'm never going to be a natural, and that's fine because, as far as I'm concerned, I am better than a natural. When people want to do like natural game to me, that just means okay. So what? You've got tall, good-looking game, big whoop. I mean, <laughs> most naturals I've ever met, they're good at one or two things, but they're not good at everything. A lot of them have like you know okay lives. You know, some guys are. They're naturals because they're rich and they have this social circle. Some guys are natural because they have like photographers and they're surrounded by these girls. Some guys are natural because they're just good looking. Some guys are natural because they're really good at bantering. Mm. But very, 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 very few of all naturals I've ever met, I've known a lot of them in Hollywood, yeah. was that they were good at everything. I see. So when you are like, again, So you learned how to get good at everything. Yeah, like I said, the holistic, you know. You know your mind, your thought, you know your thoughts, your words, and your actions. Right. I can be the natural. I mean, to me, natural. Okay, fine. It has this connotation. We're in high school. We got picked on. We want to be that high school quarterback, right? Get the head cheater. But looking back, I mean, you know, this, this guy's nowadays. He's some overweight mechanic living his glory <laughs> That's days. a stereotype, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. But you know, do you want to be a natural, or do you want to be better than a natural? This is what I've learned about most naturals. I, I had a I knew a guy called Natural J. He lived at Project Hollywood. Oh. And the reason he lived at Project Hollywood for free, mind you, in a place that was like ten thousand dollars a Holy month shit. was because he was he was like a a hot dude ten. Right? <laughs> and he got laid like a hundred he laid a hundred women by the time he was eighteen. Wow. And like mystery and those guys, they wanted to be like, how the fuck did he do this? So and they were just, like examining him, breaking yes, him down? Yes, he was like this guinea pig, right? I see. And this is what we discovered, what they discovered. He, as a natural, as a natural, right, mm -hmm. like everyone supposedly wants to be, is naturals go after the low-hanging fruit. He's a 10, but he has this image, this ego of his that he needs to protect. I so see. he's never going to go after a 9 if his percentage, his probability of success is like a 10%. When he's going to go with a six or seven, and his probability is like a seventy-five percent. I see. I've never seen, and again, I hung out, you know, Hollywood. I've known a lot of these male models, and very, very, very few of them. Yeah, sometimes you get the the uber aggressive guys, um, but those are the exception, right? Most good-looking guys, most naturals, they'll just go after what they're pretty sure that they can get. Because of their ego stops. Their them. ego. They're right. terrified of failing. Yeah, and they're they're not as well developed. And let's call it the myth of the natural. They're not as well developed. So you would you never have to compete against a guy. Oh yeah, like that because, because they're never going to get there. Yeah, they, I mean you have to you have to understand. I went through a lot of pain, a lot of failure to get where I am. Right. And I accept it. It doesn't it doesn't bother me. But imagine a natural, an incredibly attractive guy who has literally never been rejected by a woman in his entire life. And has laid a hundred women. Yeah. But he's only slept with like six, like the sixes and sevens. Right. Right. Unless like a ten is throwing herself on him, he's not going to try because he doesn't want to risk rejection. Gotcha. So, but at the same time, I will say those guys they have like no fear of sexual escalation. They don't have like these other kind of anxieties because they've slept with like a hundred women. Mm -hmm. You know, as opposed to guys that have slept with like low numbers. There's this performance anxiety. It's like, oh, when do I make the move? So yeah, I mean, I understand the appeal. 
to, to you know trying to become a natural. Yeah. But to me, you know, if you're you know, as it goes back to that beginner's hell, you know, you can you can choose to plateau or you can choose to become even more excellent. Mm -hmm. So, any more final thoughts for some tips you can give our audience? I think everybody wants to be more successful. Okay, at this. And what if I told you? That I could make your game fifteen percent more successful. Would you do it? Yeah, yeah. anything's better than nothing. Yeah, fifteen percent more. And this is a really easy thing to do. All right, is to keno, to keno touch, to keno turn, keno ping, whatever. Always when you go up to a girl, just like touch her. And usually, typically on the shoulder, okay, like that, where it's very platonic and it's non-threatening. But it grabs her attention. You've never had a girl say you shouldn't touch strangers? Oh, like maybe one out of a thousand. Because I've heard that before. I think it all depends on how. First of all, all right, when you touch, mm -hmm. a couple things you got to understand. She's not your bro, so don't go like, hey, like kind of that. Don't be, you know, um, graspy guy and go like, hey, like that. <laughs> don't be Mr. Timid and like go, hey. Yeah. And, good God. For, you know, for goodness sake, guys, please, please avoid this. Don't go like, Hey, yeah. yeah, don't do that. But psychologically speaking, like studies have shown, I remember one specific study, was, I think it was in Paris, this college in Paris. So a real study, not a bunch of like PUAs running around, right? Yeah. Um, and they gave this assignment to this guy and he had a script that he was, you know, had to say and at the end of the script, he asked for a phone number. So on one day he was allowed to touch the girl on the second day, he wasn't allowed to touch the girl. And on the day he was allowed to touch, he got 15% more numbers. Ooh. All right. It's a simple fact. If you just touch, I mean, the way I teach my guys and the way I do it, a lot of times I'll touch her, I'll keno her in an appropriate manner, obviously, to get her attention. Um, but I'll keno even before I open my mouth. All right. Establish that connection, gets her attention. And like I said, 15%. I mean, you're going to argue with that. Awesome. Well, it was great having you here in the men's room. Oh, thank you for having me.